If you're watching this episode right now, that means you've watched the other ones. Right? So like, comment, subscribe. So let's get into it. Hey guys, I hope you enjoy your Friday. Hope you're getting ready for that weekend. And let's go with another top five. I love these top five villains. So let's get into it. All right, my number five is Black Hand. Black Hand is, uh, for those who don't know, he is the uh, only remaining leader of the Black Lantern Corps. The Black Lantern Corps is basically all obsessed about death. Um, he is the only remaining lanterns because the cool part about the power of the Black Lantern Corps is, is they can bring the dead back as zombies. And they follow that Lantern Corps and they, the only way you can power up the core, uh, their, their core battery is you have to make, the, the zombies will make them feel an emotion, a certain person an emotion. They rip the heart out and as they rip the heart out, the the power rank gets more and more powerful until Necron appears, and he's one of the he's the entity of death, and it's really kind of cool. Black Hand, the reason why he's one of my favorites is because one, Jeff Johns did a fantastic job, like really like diving into his history uh, in the second omnibus of it, or they do in the Blackest Night and the Secret Origins. Basically, Black Hand, before he actually died and became like Black Hand, he was obsessed with death. He was a mortician. He had necrophilia. I mean, this is a guy who was like obsessed with death. He loved death. And to a point where he committed suicide to join death. And um, it's kind of kind of uh, interesting concept. The whole Blackest Night is all him. All his like master plan. It's awesome, guys. This guy is an awesome villain and that's why he's my number five number four dark side dark side <coughs> for those who don't know if you guys have seen the batman nightmare scene where there is a whole like uh you, you see like he's fighting off these demons and then he looks off and he sees this big horseshoe upside down horseshoe that's the omega sign alpha omega beginning and end the omega sign is always affiliated with Dark Side in the DC Universe. Dark Side is a very powerful, very like badass villain. I mean, he is scary as all get out. He's my number four, uh, mainly because of Final Crisis and of um, everything else he's kind of done. Final Crisis, uh, he has this thing called Omega Beams, and he also has this thing called the Anti Life Equation. The Anti Life Equation, if found out, can control the will of others. If you, if he, is it. And the cool part, if he embellishes it. And the cool part in Final Crisis is he puts the anti-life equation into cell phones, into like cell phones. So like everyone who's looking at the cell phone at one point gets a virus and they start like following Darkseid and they're all like screaming, you know, for Darkseid and basically like follow his will. And it's really kind of creepy, but um, it's really kind of cool at the same time. That's why Darkseid is my number four. Number three if you can't see it, guys, I'm re uh, uh, this thing is kind of looks like it says LOL. This isn't. This is actually the Rage Lanterns. The Rage Lanterns is one of my favorites, and they're led by none other than my the third villain that I think is the most <coughs> as the most scary is um, Atrocitus. Atrocitus has this cool like story where basically like because of what happened with the Green Lantern. So at first the Green Lantern Corps had a uh, the Green Lantern Corps wasn't formed. It was the Marsh the Manhunters. And the Manhunters were in Dominion Will. They were they were made by the Guardians, but they kind of went haywire and went nuts, started killing people. And the first one of the plants they did was they killed um, uh, Atrocitus's plant along with his wife and child. He went nuts. He went into blood magic. Eventually, uh, uh, was so mad that you know he made his own Lantern Corps, and the Red Lantern like core like oath is awesome. Just listen to this, okay? With blood and rage of crimson red, ripped from your corpse so freshly dead, together with our hellish hate, we'll burn you all. That is your fate. So another good thing about the Red Lantern Corps is if you get chosen by the Red Lantern Corps and you accept it and you get the ring on, that ring becomes your heart. So there's a cool scene in Blackest Night where um <coughs> where like the Red Lanterns are like this guy is full of rage and they rip out the heart and Atrocitus doesn't die because they don't realize that the heart is actually his full heart is actually in his ring. So they rip out the heart and if they were smart they would just keep on ripping it out and charging it up because he's a never ending power source for them then. But um 
the only way you can like take it off safely is one if you got a blue lantern core uh people that like basically can empower but they also have healing probabilities uh if you put that on there they can definitely uh, keep you alive because if you take it off you're dead it's like it's it's, it's like ripping your own heart off you rip off that uh, you rip off your own cool thing about that is Guy Gardner does it to Atrocitus at one point, and it's so badass, guys. It's so badass. It's such a cool scene. And, like, the cat, Dexter, has to, like, save him. It's so cool. It's so cool, guys. But, um, that's why my number three is Atrocitus. Number two, you can see kind of a little bit of a pattern, is Sinestro. Sinestro is part of the Sinestro Corps War, but before that, he was a Green Lantern. Uh, you guys probably watched the Green Lantern movie, and said, but I saw him on there, he was a good guy. Yes, he started off on that. Yes, he did train Hal Jordan. That was a great honor. But, if you guys actually stayed after the credits, there was a secret ending where Sinestro did put the Fear Ring on and became the Sinestro Corps. Um, the cool part about him is, like, he is such a badass in which he's just like, he does not care. He believes he is the greatest. And he believes fear is the only way to, like, envision everyone. It's the only way to rule the world. And it's really kind of cool what Jeff Johns does on that. Also what Robert Gendini did. And also Colin Bunn made his own series on it, which I would highly recommend to anyone who's, like, wanting to get into the uh, the Green Lantern Corps stuff and they really like Sinestro as a villain. His run was fantastic. It was only four volumes. It was really good. I really, 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 really enjoyed it. So that's why Sinestro is my number two. And for my number one... Drum roll, please. Cyborg Superman. Now, many of you are going, who the f Cyborg Superman? Cyborg Superman is a part of the reign of Superman. So, Superman died in 1997. They killed him off. Uh, they brought him back a little bit later. Uh, and uh, what it was, was there were four people claiming to be Superman. Steel. John Henry Irons, he was a black guy, uh, basically this cool costume where he was like fully in steel, had a big George Hammer, actually he never claimed to be Superman, but everyone thought he was the spirit of Superman, he embodied that. Number two was Connell. so Superman's real name was kal -El. there's Connell, also known as Superboy, Connor Kent. He was the clone of Superman, the clone of Lex Luthor and Superman, really kind of cool one. He claimed to be Superman. Number three, the Eradicator. He's one actually one of my favorites. Um, uh, Superman's in that one mainly because of how he looked and how he acted. He was uh, the full on. If Superman ignored his human side and became full Kryptonian, that's the Eradicator. And he was so cool because he had this cool like the emblem was right here, but like it was black and and blue. And he had this little, he had, he had visors, he, he was known as the visor Superman because he was, he was sensitive to sunlight, like he's, he, he needed the sunlight, but his sunlight, he, when he first came out, he looked at the sun directly and was directly blinded, like kind of blinded, so he wears these goggles, and he has these cool powers that like, are, that shoot out like solar flares, he burns a couple of people, he's an anti-hero, I want to say in that one. And then the fourth one was Cyborg Superman. Cyborg Superman actually in the whole comic series was actually, I believe, the closest to it. We, I, when I read it, it was we, we really thought he was going to be, he was actually the true Superman because he had the memories of Superman. He remembered all these super, uh, certain like events that happened. But you later found out he is a, a guy called Hank Henshaw. Now, if you guys have watched the Death of Superman movie, you might remember Hank Henshaw was this astronaut that like everything was going wrong, like everyone was starting to die. And instead of like, really trying to get like back to earth he kept on relying on superman trying to pick him up trying to help him and he was really disappointed that's the same kind of mythology there he really believed that superman would help him and he didn't so he like because it ruined everything there he, like his wife died everything he blamed superman for it and so he took like the the superman pod that had a little bit that uh, was carrying the dna of the eradicator and had a little bit of dna of superman put that on there Basically became Superman, half Superman, half Hank Henshaw. The, the crazy part about it is he wiped out, like, this is how bad he was. He killed everyone. I mean, uh, he, he, he wiped out a whole city, Coast City. And it was crazy. 
And the reason why he's one of my favorite, like, uh, all-time, like, villains is mainly because of, like, what, uh, Dan Jurgens did with the current Green Lantern run and bringing him back and really, like, almost wiping Coast City again and everything. It's, it's awesome what he was doing, guys. It's really good. I mean, he's one of my most terrifying villains of all time. Well, that's my video for this Friday on my top five, and I want to know your top five DC villains. Do you agree with me on some of them? Do you not agree on some of them? And you guys got to really, like, tell me which ones are and why. Tell me which ones you like and why. Uh, so, yeah, tell me what you like. All right, guys, thanks for watching this video. Subscribe if you haven't. Uh, hit that little bell so you uh, never miss out on the giveaways and the live streams that we do. And as always, guys, keep it cool, keep it joyful, and I'll see you guys all next Monday. Peace out.